We'll start with a demonstration of some TIA 920 sequences. John's TIA 920 package is a very comprehensive set of sequences for send and receive response, level, distortion, echo, and more. John will tell you a little about the overall package, then run through demos of a few of the specific speakerphone measurements to give you a feel for what the sequences look like when they are implemented in soundcheck. We only have time in the seminar to show just a small section of the total package, but we have a more extensive video on our YouTube channel if you want to see more of the sequences in action. Over to you, John. We'll be showing you the soundcheck sequences that implement TIA standard 920B. I'm John Baer, I'm developer of those sequences. I'd like to tell you a little bit about them and show you how they work. But first, I'd like to say a little bit about the standard 920B. It applies to handsets, headsets, and speakerphones, and makes use of either hats or a mouth simulator and various microphones. It's comprehensive enough that it applies to almost any communication device. The sequences themselves implement the clauses in the standard. They cover almost all the important performance aspects of the phone. This is a typical setup for testing speakerphones according to TIA 920B. In this case, the lip ring of the mouth is 50 centimeters from the device under test. And on the other side, the microphone grid is also 50 centimeters from the device under test. In this view, you see the speakerphone oriented towards the mouth, and this is the arrangement for sending measurements. When it's time to do receive measurements, we can turn the speakerphone 180 degrees and point it towards the microphone to do the receive measurements. This is a very typical setup for a moderate size speakerphone. Different devices might require different setups, but this is typical, and if you're not sure where to start, this would be a good place. So that's the setup. Thanks, John. Now we're going to demonstrate some of the measurements from this sequence package. As I said before, we don't have time to demonstrate all the test sequences. So we've picked a few specific ones that we think will give you a good feel for how they measure these important characteristics. These sequences are all set up so that you can save your data to Excel or to a master report that contains all the measurements you made. First up, we're going to measure receive frequency response and level. When the measurement starts, we get a verification of the bandwidth of our measurement. If it's okay, we can go ahead. And now here is a reminder about the position of the free field microphone, also about the device volume control put to nominal setting. If we don't know what that is, we can find that out from the measurement the and repeat. The, back of the, wide chair. A pound of sugar costs more the signal you're hearing now the is a four-sentence segment of IEEE male speech. It's used to condition the device into a stable state. The repetition of those four sentences is actually used the for the measurement. Too high for the, couch. the ship was torn apart on the sharp reef. The measurement didn't pass. The level is okay, but the frequency response is not. If you look at the upper left-hand graph, you can see a solid line that is the measurement in third octaves. It does not pass the mask. For information, there's a dotted line showing 12th octave measurement. And because they go together closely, that shows us there's not too many reflections in the room where we did the test. In the lower right, is the waveform that was used for conditioning. That looks good. And in the lower left, the waveform that was looked for the measurement. That also looks good. So this appears to be a valid measurement. And now we will save the data. We could simply save the parameters in a simple Excel sheet. But instead, we're going to put the data into a speakerphone master report that is formatted in a very nice way. We can add a word to the name of the file could be whatever we type here. But we can also add comments that will go into the test report itself. It could be something about the test conditions, the volume control setting, or maybe something special. After some interaction with Excel, 
writing the data to the master report. The sequence is now finished. There are also sequences for other received measurements such as volume control and also corresponding send measurements. They are all quite similar in format, so we won't show them now. Next, we'll show you a speakerphone echo measurement. This is an important measurement because it is very distracting hearing an echo of your own voice when you're talking to someone. At the beginning of the sequence, we have the reminder about the bandwidth it's set up for, and we're wideband, so that's good. The echo is actually made by a metric called TCLW. I'll explain that a bit later. And it's normalized by use of the speaker receive level and send levels that we measured previously. They were stored and will now be recalled. In this measurement, you have the option to run a long conditioning cycle, which is eight sentences going back and forth between sending and receiving direction, alternating male and female. The object here is to make sure that the device is in a stable state. The jacket hung on the back of the wide chair. The jacket hung on the back of the wide chair. So delays were measured so that these stimulus signals can be lined up. The jacket hung on the back of the wide chair. Sending. The coffee stand is receiving. For the couch. A pound of Sending. sugar costs more than eggs. The ship was receiving. Apart on the sharp reef. The coffee stand Sending. is too high for the couch. Receiving. The jacket hung on the back of the wide chair. The ship Sending. was torn apart on the sharp reef. A pound receiving. Costs more than Conditioning eggs. Si is done. The jacket hung on the back of the wide chair. A pound of sugar costs more than eggs. The coffee stand is too high for the couch. The ship was torn apart on the sharp reef. The jacket hung on the back of the wide chair. So as in some of the other sequences, the IEEE speech segment is played one time for further conditioning, and the measurement is performed on the second repetition. The jacket hung on the left-hand graph, you can see echo frequency response with the a solid line. This will be performed couch. three times at three different stimulus levels. Echo frequency the response the the is the signal coming back the from the send direction eggs. out of the dot the coffee stand is relative to the, the stimulus the that was sent to the dot the in the receiving the direction. The jacket hung on the back of the wide chair. Now, if the device was linear and noise-free, all of these frequency responses would lie on top of each other, but they do not. And in this case, it shows that most of what's being measured here is actually noise. You really can't see it from the waveform on the right, but there is a little noise that's coming back from the device, and that more or less is contaminating the frequency response, except in this lowest level, in the dotted blue curve. So on the left, we have the male information, and on the right, it's female. If you look at the frequency response for male echo on the yellow curve and take an eyeball average, you will get approximately minus 70 dB. Change the sign, and you get approximately plus 70 dB, which is the TCLW. Similar on the right is the information for female. The box at the bottom shows how the normalization was done. The idea is to correct the measurement to what it would have been if the sending output level and the receiving output level were exactly nominal. Some authorities do not recommend doing this, but it's in the TIA 920 standard. You can choose not to do this if you prefer, or follow the standard and perform the normalization. Now we can also take a look at the waveforms and see if there were any noise bursts of any significance during any of these waveforms. There are some visible, but they're pretty small. So mostly what we're measuring here is noise coming back with an occasional burst, like you see in the lower left graph. That would be the male echo at the lowest level. In a similar way, you can see something on the lower right from the female echo measurement. 
there's a little blurb around three seconds. As before, we can save to an Excel sheet or to the master report. We'll use the master report as before and put any notes here about the conditions or anything else that we've observed during the test. Once we click that, the Excel sheets will be generated. And when that's finished, the sequence is done. And now we are finished. Now let's look at a different type of measurement. Here we're going to look at a send directionality measurement. This is particularly useful for measuring the acoustic performance of a speakerphone off axis. Although this was originally used for conference phones, we're seeing renewed interest in this measurement from people using smart speakers as communication devices. In this demo, we manually rotate the phone, although you could further automate this by using a turntable controlled from within soundcheck. This is a measurement of sound frequency response and level performed at several different angles and then compared to each other. The idea is to see if the phone is well usable over a wide range of angles on the front side. Since the frequency response measurement is the same that you've seen before, we won't actually go through it, but I'll sort of summarize the process here. The first is to set the phone up at zero degrees and measure sound frequency response. If you need to reset the volume control, you can redo that one until the volume control is set properly. Then you'll get a prompt to move the phone to the 30 degree position and measure again, and so forth for the others. After that's done, you will then see the calculations for send directionality. So now we'll skip to the end and look at that. When the measurements are done, you'll see a set of frequency response curves like the one on the upper right. All five positions frequency responses are on the same graph, and you can see pretty easily that they're not that different from each other. The solid line is the zero degree reference. From those response measurements, the overall level is calculated. That's shown in the upper left box. There is a little tolerance of plus minus a few dB, and the difference that you see, send level directionality, is the difference in level between that particular angle and the reference. And you can see they're all pretty small, so all four pass, and the entire test is passed. It means that the sending response and level from the front side of the phone is about the same at all these various angles. At the end, you can save the data to a simple Excel sheet or to the test report, just as we've done for the other sequences. After that is complete, then the sequence is finished. Moving on, we have one more demo from the suite of test sequences. Here we're going to look at received noise and single frequency interference. This tells us how much noise is present in the communication device during a call. First, check the bandwidth setup. These measurements should be made with volume controls set to nominal. If you don't know where that is, you can perform measurements and find out. There's a conditioning signal before the noise measurement. Minus 20 dBU is the default. The jacket hung on the back of the Now there will be a full the chain of IEEE speech sentences the played for conditioning for to get the device in a stable state. Apart, and then one more the sentence. The jacket hung on the back of the wide chair. And immediately after this sentence, the noise will be measured. The box in the middle has the measured metrics. Received noise, 23 dBA, is well below the tolerance. Single frequency interference, such as what you see around 6 and 700 hertz, is low, and it's low enough that it passes the requirement. In the graph, you can see that the white line and the red line are a spectrum, the white being transient noise, that is just right after that last speech stops, and the red is steady state, which is a longer period after a pause of five seconds. They both are passing the requirement. In the waveform, the red is the steady state noise, the white is the transient noise near the end 
of the conditioning signal. So as before, we can save to a simple Excel sheet or save to the test report, which is what we'll do now. Again, we can put in comments or remarks about the volume control setting or anything else that will help you understand the test after it's over. And when the Excel sheets are written, the sequence will be done. So that's all the TIA-920 tests we have time for. As you can see, there are many more tests included in this package, and we'd be happy to arrange a demonstration if you want to take a closer look.